Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode we're going to be solving a Physics 7b Rotational Inertia and Angular Momentum Practice Problem. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel, it really helps a lot. So let's go ahead and take a look at this problem. So we basically have some masses and they are attached to uh, both sides of a rod of length L. The rod is then nailed down such that it rotates around the nail. So in the first scenario, uh, the pivot point is basically in the center and in the second scenario, the pivot point is at one of the masses. An identical force is then applied at a distance uh, L halves from the pivot on each scenario. And we basically have to compare some values. Which of these scenarios has the greatest moment of inertia? Which of these scenarios have the same torque? Uh, change in angular momentum and then angular velocity after the force is being applied. So as you can see, I have all of the necessary information written here in my problem. So both of these masses have a mass of m each. The total length is equal to L. And I basically need to compare some values. The first thing that I have to compare is moment of inertia. So for this part, we basically need to remember the equation that we know for moment of inertia, the one for point masses. This entire mass is, uh, the, the rod is massless, so we're only working with two masses on each of the scenarios. And the equation was sum of the masses r squared. So let's just start with the first one. So the first one is, I'm just gonna call this one and two. So this is M1, or well, let's just, I mean, okay, so this is the first M, and uh, the distance from the pivot point is equal to L over two squared, plus the other M, and the distance is, again, half of the total distance, squared. So this is equal to two times, because I'm adding them up, m l squared divided by four. So this is equal to m l squared divided by two. Now let's just go ahead and do that for the other one, for b. So for b, we have two masses, so let's just go ahead. The first mass, but then r is equal to zero, so it cancels out, plus the other mass. Now the length, or the r, is equal to the entire length, so instead of half, this is just going to be l. So this is it. Uh, so ib is just equal to ml squared. Now. Uh, we basically have our uh, both of our moments of inertia. So which one is bigger? Well, this one is one half of ml squared and this one is ml squared. This means the moment of inertia B is greater than moment of inertia A. And this solves the first part of our problem. Now the second part of our problem ha um, is asking us to compare the torques. So as you can see, we have, in both cases, we have an axis of rotation and we have a force, which means that there is a torque that this system is feeling. So let's just go ahead and work with that. So the equation for torque is equal to RF sine of 90. So for torque A, R is going to be equal to this distance. So this distance is half of the length f is just going to be equal to this f, and then sine is going to be sine of 90 degrees, which is equal to 1, so I'm not going to write that. So torque A is equal to LF divided by 2. Now let's just go ahead and do the same thing for the second scenario. So for the second scenario, this distance is half of the rod, so L divided by 2. This force is F, RF, and then sine of 90. But again, in this case, both of these are um, perpendicular to each other, which means that uh, sine of 90 degrees, and that means equal to 1. So I'm not going to write that. 
So this is LF divided by 2. Now, both of the forces are exactly the same per the instructions of the problem. Then, uh, so this means that our torques are going to be exactly the same. And that solves the second part of this problem. Now for the third part of this problem, we have to compare change in angular momentum. Now, changing angular momentum, you need to remember that we defined it, or angular impulse, quote unquote angular impulse, that is equal to the net torque times delta t. Now, let's just go ahead and start with the first one. So delta L for A is equal to net torque. In this case, we only have one force, which means that we only have one torque, so the net torque is just torque A and times delta T. And then if we just wanna, you know, further be explicit on this, I guess that we can write LF divided by two times delta T. For the second torque, changing, uh, for the second scenario, I'm sorry, for scenario B, we have the same equation, delta T. This scenario is only feeling one force, which means that it is only feeling one torque, so the net torque would be just that one torque. So if I further, if I decide to just write this down, then this would be LF2 times delta T. Now the instructions are being very clear in that delta T is exactly the same for both of them. So because delta t is exactly the same for both of them, that means that delta LA is exactly the same as delta LB. And this solves the third part of the problem. Now we only have one part of the problem that's left. And the last thing that we have to compare is the final angular velocity for A and B. Now delta L is also equal to moment of inertia times change in angular velocity. So let's just go ahead and start with A. So the delta um, L is equal to moment of inertia. Okay, that was my cut. So delta L A is equal to moment of inertia A times change in angular velocity. However, this problem is saying that for both scenarios, both of these um, you know, uh, devices start with no angular velocity. So this would be final minus initial and initial is equal to zero. So let's see. So this is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to solve for it. Angular velocity is equal to delta LA divided by IA. Now for the other one, B delta LB is equal to moment of inertia B change in angular velocity b. Now this I'm just going to leave the same. And again, this is final. Well, I guess I should be explicit. This is a final minus initial. And this one also starts at zero. So for b, we have delta lb divided by ib. Now we already figure out that this number and this number are exactly the same. However, on part A, we figure out that uh, moment of inertia for A was one half ml squared, moment of inertia of B was ml squared, so they are not the same. These two being not the same means that these two are not going to be the same. So now we just need to figure out which one is going to be the bigger one. So let's just go ahead and solve for, um, let's just plug in these numbers over here. So if you plug in these numbers over here, or well, I guess we don't really need to because we already know that moment of inertia of A is smaller than B. So this number is smaller than this number, but both of them are dividing. So because this number is smaller and we are dividing on this number over this number, then that is that basically means that moment uh, final angular velocity of a is going to be uh, greater than final angular velocity of b. 
we didn't really need to substitute because again we already figure out that this number was greater this number was greater than this number and both of them are dividing a number that's exactly the same so there really is no need to you know just keep substituting things at this point i think that you know it is um pretty obvious that a has to be uh, greater than b so this basically solves this final exam practice problem we already have everything figured out i like this exercise because it is very good practice on all of the concepts that we've learned so far which is you know usually what you want on a final exam if you enjoyed this content and if you found it useful please leave a like on our uh, on our youtube channel it really helps our channel a lot and i'll see you guys on the next video